my adoring and adorable fans. I'd kiss each and every one of you if I wasn't so contagious. <laughs> but thank you again for making us the most successful TV show in history. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. In history. I wouldn't believe it myself, except that there it is in a chart I made an hour ago. <laughs> you see it shows Super Bowl 49, final MASH episode, the last episode of Cheers. <laughs> Final game of the World Series in 2016, Cat. You like that one? And there's Gutfeld in the middle, doubling all of that combined, and then some with four billion viewers. I know. Don't bother checking it. The data's right there. And we did it without our staff breaking into the Capitol. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you didn't know that stuff. And why? Because we live in two different worlds. It's sad. In one world, you're the hero. In the other, you're the villain. I could be Thor. <laughs> or I could be Satan. In a perfect world, I would be both. But these worlds mirror each other like the Olsen twins trapped in a funhouse. For example, in one world, the Supreme Court justice hero would be Sonia Sotomayor, and the villain would be Clarence Thomas. In the opposite universe, it would be the reverse. Fine. But in this universe of two competing movies, we are told by the media that you can't respect both sides. It's one or the other. One you can adore, and the other you should hate. Yep, there are 64 genders, but only one worldview. So once in a while, it's good when someone comes along to remind us that it doesn't have to be this way. Take it away, Soto. Talk about Clarence. I have probably disagreed with him more than with any other justice. That we have not joined each other's opinions more than anybody else. And yet, Justice Thomas is the one justice in the building that literally knows every employee's name. He is a man who keeps, cares deeply about the court as an institution, about the people who work there, but about people. He has a different vision than I do, but I think we share a common understanding about people and kindness towards them. That's why I can be friends with him and still continue our daily battle. But that's awesome. <laughs> and it's awesome for a reason that I've been talking about since I hosted that political talk show on Animal Planet back in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, screw you, Panda. <laughs> I hosted it with Cronkite back in the day. Taught him a lot. In this woke, riddled era, any person seen commiserating with another person holding different, more unsavory opinions actually takes on that person's terrible beliefs. You're normalizing hate, they would tell you. This contamination argument is used to keep people apart. If you are seen being nice to X, then the mob on social media will come for your scalp. No offense to Liz Warren. <laughs> And it's not just from talking to obvious clowns, but from decent people you may not see eye to eye with. And that alone means they can't be your friends. This is not something you see among thoughtful older adults. You know, the 11 left on the planet. <laughs> Hell, even pets get this. I mean, how many pictures of dogs and cats hanging out do I have to show you? <laughs> <laughs> but this new idea of segregation is brought to you by the non-thinkers coming out of our campuses, where allowing a conservative speaker is considered a violent act. But if li listening to speech that you disagree with is tantamount to violence, then the opposite must be true. A violent act is really just another form of speech. Don't think of it as me cracking you in the head with a bat. Think of it as a disagreement uh, with you by reading you a strongly worded letter with a nail at the end of it. <laughs> this is what happened at the Washington Post. A writer retweets a joke and a coworker calls him out on Twitter, as opposed to doing the adult thing, which is ignore it. Or if you're pissed off, you walk over to his office and you tell him why. But you see, doing it face to face takes a little internal fortitude, something you couldn't find at the WAPO or any similar outlet because it's mostly babies these days. So instead, you know, I'll just run to Twitter and have all my like-minded, thin-skinned, unhappy friends gang up on you because there's safety in numbers, even if half those numbers are really bots. <laughs> of course, you could just not laugh at the joke you don't find funny because, you know, you aren't the center of the universe unless Copernicus was wrong. You know, scientists haven't had a great record lately. <laughs> what does he know?
<laughs> but adults do that. And these people aren't adults. They are brats who see cooperation as a weakness and tantrums as heroism. So they shut down discourse, they call you evil, and that's the end of it. See, we don't have a lot of adults in media anymore. They find mean tweets to be hateful speech, but endorse violence or harassment in the name of justice. Whether it's BLM, Antifa, or Joy Behar when she runs out of foundation and hostess moon pies. <laughs> that logic is as upside down as a Joe Biden bike ride. <laughs> uh, cheap. That was cheap. Cheap. Very cheap. So the WAPO staffer continued to crap on her coworkers like she mistook x lax for a brownie until she got canned, thankfully. See, don't settle stuff privately. You don't run to Twitter to look for allies in your personal crusade. I bring this up as a contrast to Sotomayor. She violated this new golden rule in discourse. She treated an ideological adversary as a human being, which is now lacking these days. These days, if you disagree with someone, well, a wise man, he said it better than I ever could. And if you disagree with me, then you, sir, are worse than Hitler. And if you disagree with me, you are worse than Hitler. And if you disagree with me, you, sir, are worse than Hitler. And if you disagree with me, you're worse than Hitler. And if you disagree with me, you're a racist homophobe who is worse than Hitler. And if you disagree with me, then you're probably a racist Nazi who's worse than Hitler. Wow. Yeah, that was a while ago. But I called it like a Babe Ruth home run. And it's also hard to believe how much better looking I got since then. <laughs> Sorry, Caitlin. You know, you weren't the only one who got hotter with age. <laughs> hey, girl! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Welcome to the show, by the way. Always a pleasure. I know, at least for me. <laughs> <laughs> but you could say I transitioned from hunky to super hunky. And I want that to be my pronoun. But I am like a fine wine. The older I get, the more I'm worth, the better my taste, and I still enjoy a good corking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> still, I won't hold my breath waiting for the other networks to show people getting along, even if they disagree. Tonight on the Chess News Network. David Rooks for the Chess News Network covering how political divisions are tearing apart friendships, marriages, and sewing circles. Here's a couple of things they're in love right now. Sir, sir, uh -huh. sir, did you and your wife vote the same in the last election? Uh, no. Um, she voted Republican. I voted Democrat. It was okay. It's fine. And miss, did you know that your husband still texts his ex-girlfriend? Um, I thought you deleted read her from your phone. Whoa. He has two phones. Okay, well, I have two phones for work. You lying son of a bitch. You work at Burger King. Well, at least one of us knows how to cook. You work at the drive-thru. No Whoa, one's calling At least one you. of us knows how to drive. Okay, so Proof that different political views do many relationships. Back to you, Grim. It would be nice if my counterparts might show that clip of Sotomayor praising Thomas. Like a school kid, I want less division. <laughs> but they probably can't, because if you said nice things about Clarence Thomas, you might as well say nice things about Hitler. And if you disagree with me on that, then you certainly are worse than what's his name. <laughs> Let's welcome. <laughs> around Democrats wearing stilettos. Fox News contributor Caitlyn Jenner. Hey. His comedy's like his time as a cab driver. In both cases, he drives people away. Oh. Oh. Host of Fox Across America, Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> She's so patriotic, Betsy Ross sent her a friend request. Former Deputy <laughs> National Security Advisor, Katie McFarland. She looks like a million bucks, thanks to inflation. <laughs> Fox News contributor, Cat Tip. <laughs> Caitlin, uh, we had a little, we had exchanged words in the green room, and uh, you seemed like you were pretty perturbed with me about something I said. Hmm? Oh, never, Greg. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, there are a few things. Actually, I just want to say one thing about sure. your opening first. Mm -hmm. Which one? Uh, <laughs> yes, it was <laughs> your brilliant oh, opening. Oh, your oh. brilliant opening. Um, honestly, I am 
I am so impressed with Clarence Thomas to be able to know all the names of all the people <laughs> yes. at, at the courthouse, at the Supreme Court, right. and their kids, and when their birthdays are, and all that sort of stuff. At, for me, at this point in my life, mm -hmm. I have a hard time remembering my own name. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. Nice. Try naming yourself. Think yeah. about that. It is the hardest thing in the world. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but you did say, you did say on Friday's show. Yes. Okay? You yes. said on Friday's show, one, that you were very excited for me to be here, and I appreciate that, and I'm yes. excited to be yes. with all of you. Hey, girl. Um, but, thank you. <laughs> but, you also made a comment about me about how, you know, I changed life. I went from... Uh, being a hurdler to a wearing a girdle. Yeah. Yes. Hurdles, there were, hurdles to hurdler girdles. to girdler. It was yes. something like that. <laughs> yes. And it, very funny at my expense. Uh, yes. But it was it was honestly it was very good. I, I enjoyed the show. Yes. And I'm I'm very excited to be here. It's uh, yeah, always a pleasure to have you on, uh, on, and we continue to have as long as I get to insult you because that's what I love. <laughs> this is what friends do. You're this supposed is... to insult each other. True story. Make fun of each other. Thank you. Even people that I don't I can't stand him. That's <laughs> true. true. But um, you know we we still get along. You, you know. Make it work. Right. Make right. Because I mean I'm like I'm very tolerant. You're a white supremacist. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you know, notice how I didn't laugh at that one. I know. I like, A little I'm too close it. to home. Stop it. I actually, I am, I'm actually thrilled you're back. I was here last week. Dana was hosting. Yeah. And uh, normally, you know, when you're guest hosting the biggest late night show in the country, you have big shoes to fill. But in this case, it was a size three. So, <laughs> so she was. It's tough out here. It's yeah, I, I love you. Yeah. I love you. It's a tough crowd. And by the way, I do, I do look like a figure skater who let himself go during the lockdown. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got to be the lift guy now. They can't pick me up anymore. But I'm just, I was just going to ask you where your lion was, but I don't know if anybody remembers Siegfried and Roy. But... <laughs> I, I always took this as more of a Tiger King crowd, but all right, that's fine. That's fine. I still love you. I still love all of you. Um, I, I actually did love your monologue because it's so true. They can't have us get along. And the joke of it is, okay, they've always gotten along, even at a SCOTUS level. Like, no one likes to talk about this. But RBG and Anton and Scalia were great friends. Mm -hmm. And in that regard, politics is always like pro wrestling. You know, at the end yep. of the match, the fans of the Macho Man and Jake the Snake beat the hell out of each other in the parking lot, while Jake the Snake and the Macho Man go to Hooters. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I only know that because I'm the guy at Hooters. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> But that's our politics. I don't know if that's a good thing. What do you I, mean? I, I mean, the idea of what you said, it makes mm -hmm. total sense. But it's like, so you rile up the audiences, yeah. and then you go off and you high five in but, private. But, well, this is what I want to say. To, to her credit, I don't think she was trying to rile up the audience. Yeah. And that's the part that I think is so ridiculous, that she has to justify mm -hmm. being friends with a Supreme Court justice. Mm -hmm. Like, we're a bunch of fat, spoiled children at their birthday party. Right. Like, I'm sorry I'm friends with the guy who doesn't want to play Red Rover, but he can <laughs> still have cake and a toy. Like, how old are we? I think it's stupid. So I was actually, for this one, I was, I was actually happy with her for at least acknowledging yeah. that there is, like, some cross-pollination between the two sides. But she did admit to being ideological in a big way. And if yeah. you remember, Obama famously scolded the Supreme Court for legislating from the bench, but she was basically apologizing for the fact that they might not be able to this time around, which is sad. Yeah. What do you think, KT? See, I think that it's interesting that she did, she never talks publicly. Right. And the fact that she came out and talked about how great Clarence Thomas was... They've got about six decisions that are going to come out in the next couple of weeks. Um, everything from, um, you know, from immigration to abortion to guns rights to elections, integrity. And I think that they're very nervous in the Supreme Court that they're going to start having assassination attempts, that it's going to rile the country up. And so I think what she was doing was preempting that and saying, he's a really good guy. He's my friend. And I bet you'll see more justices come out in the next week to... Do similar things. Oh, that's uh, like if we see somebody else start talking about Kavanaugh. It, it, what's her mm -hmm. name? Kagan? Yeah. yeah. God, I'm terrible. <laughs> Another one named Kagan? No, everyone went with it. They thought you were saying Dagan. Oh. They're like, yeah, she's great. We love her. But when they we say love her. They're, really, they're going to have other justices going, Logan, he's really not a bad guy. Don't kill him. <laughs> well, we've gone really, really, really down a bad, bad path. So bad. You know, you're a lot like uh, uh, Clarence Thomas. In what way? Well, <laughs> I mean, 
Well, I'm not on the Supreme Court yet. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, I never, like, we, I, I never air your dirty laundry publicly. We always, <laughs> whenever we've got issues. <laughs> It's no, unfortunately, you make up dirty laundry. Yes. <laughs> which is way worse than the actual dirty laundry that you may have after knowing me all these years. And you air that instead, mm -hmm. which is the best. When I have, like, random grandmothers messaging me on Facebook saying they hope I get help with my heroin addiction. <laughs> that I don't have. Uh, but, yeah, no. I mean, is there anything else or, you know, just... Well, I think there's... A, my theory is that the reason why... Okay, it's an adult non-adult divide, in, like, in the workplace. Like, you see these young people that don't know how to act like adults, right? Yeah. They don't know how to, like, they, they believe that living, that they're living their personal life at work. Yeah. And that's, and I, I wonder if it's because the Supreme Court, no, they have a job for life, so you gotta get along. And number two, they're not online, so they don't get pulled into a lot of this stuff. Right, I also think that there's just a failure to acknowledge intentions. Mm. I thought what she said was so great, just, hey, you know, we have different ideas about how to help people. Right. Where now, you assume the worst intention. So if I say that I don't want the government to give something to people, because the government can't give anything, that without taking it from someone else. But anyway, people say, okay, that means that she's saying that people shouldn't have that, mm -hmm. which is really not the case. I, it's not the same to say that the government's not the best you know, entity to handle something. Um, it doesn't mean I don't care about the issue, but now it's a lot of assuming the worst intentions of other people. Mm -hmm. Demonizing them. Yep. I mean, you're not just different. You're not just wrong, Listen, you're evil. But you're just saying once that you're evil, you don't care anything if people die. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Yeah. No, not... I prefer people to starve. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I want them to suffer before suffer, they die. Right. Yeah. Please take that out of context and put that on a loop. <laughs> All right. Up next, Hillary sounds the alarm on wokeness that'll do more harm. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.